Dan Larson here at the photo booth with a P.O. Box Harvest up first. Oh, oh, excuse me, hang on. Up first is Nathan from Vancouver. Oh, this is a big box. Nathan from Vancouver, Washington. Uh, Nathan mentioned that uh, in his letter, in his... Look at this bedazzled... Bedazzled card uh, with Stormtrooper uh, art all over it. It's so very sparkly, so chic. Uh, he mentions in his letter here that uh, he found the show at the right time uh, when he really needed to find it. Something to help him get through some tough times and rekindle a love for toys and collecting. Uh, as well as uh, it was something he could share with his wife. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty cool to hear, you know, stories like that. Uh, sending quite a few things here we've got. First up, we've got some House of the Dead. House of the Dead. Is that how I said it? That's how I meant to say it. Uh, House of the Dead, to my knowledge, was a uh, video game that I played uh, several years ago. I don't know if they still make it or not. Uh, it was originally in the arcades. I don't know if it made it to the home systems. It's a shooting game, as I recall. Uh, and you had all the zombies and monsters and stuff. And you'd shoot them and stuff. That's why they call it a shooting game. But uh, this guy's name is uh, Strength. Is that right? I'm gonna put it in my notes here. Yeah, strength. Uh, I didn't really know that much about House of the Dead. I did not play it that much. I didn't really play a lot of games at the arcade because they cost money. I'd rather save that money for like toys and things. But in here we got some other House of the Dead figures as well. This I'm told is uh, Johnny and uh, there's others. I have one that's called Rex uh, and he's got, yeah, I never understood stands like this. This has got a like a title stand here. There's no pegs for the figure to stand on. Same thing here, no pegs or anything. Um, but it's cool that those are included. Uh, this guy is not gonna stand, there's no way. Oh, what do you know? Uh, he, uh, he's got axes, and he would, as I recall, he would throw these axes at you. Throw them or, I can't remember if he would throw them or chop, chop at you. And you could like, if I remember correctly, you could like shoot the axes out of his hands and then shoot him, something like that. Uh, the other guy is uh, Rex, he has like a metal face mask on and uh, he has, like, big, giant Freddy Krueger claw mitts. Uh, anyway, this guy also came with these two frogs. Uh, and so they're both here. And then there's this little guy who, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this is the little driver from uh, the Mecha Hulk Marvel Legends figure, if I'm not mistaken. That's that guy. I don't know what his name is. Uh, we've got a, a Lego Boba Fett keychain. Uh, a motorcycle that goes to some X character. I'm going to guess... Uh, Wolverine or Cyclops. Uh, we've got a loyal subjects, uh, Snake Eyes. Uh, looks like he might be missing his sword. And then uh, this guy from Dragon Ball Z, who I'm not even going to guess. Uh, I'm going to guess it's either Goku, Goku or Vegeta. I don't know the difference between the two. I, I used to think it was the hair color, but that's not true. Uh, I've learned enough to know that uh, this is more of a Saiyan or a Super Saiyan thing as opposed to just blonde hair or black hair. Uh, also in here, we've got a... Uh, McFarlane Toys, oh, she's missing her weapon, it's in that box. Uh, this, in uh, 2004, the uh, McFarlane Toys did a Conan line of action figures. Uh, and this is Belit, or Belit, I don't know how to pronounce her name. Uh, she's got a big weapon, a big axe up here. Uh, and she's supposed to have a stand that she stands on. And I don't know who she's about to hack down on, but she's about to hack down with some fury onto that uh, unsuspecting victim, or suspecting. Uh, we've also got a blind bag. Uh, blind bag. This is not, this is the opposite of blind bag. This is a very, very, uh, enhanced visuals bag, but full of, uh, blind bag My Little Pony figures, uh, for Mrs. Toy Galaxy. We got some translucent ones here. We got some sparkly ones here. Uh, I'm told this one is, uh, Cheese Sandwich, which I knew was the Weird Al Yankovic, uh, pony. We've had this one before. We have this one somewhere, but it's in, like, a this size pony, and I'm pretty sure it's clear, so... Uh, I didn't realize uh, he was a black-colored uh, pony. I thought he was, like, translucent orange, and that just made sense for, you know, the name and the character and whatever else. Um, but uh, I don't know any of these other horses' names, uh, unfortunately. Uh, and Mrs. Toy Galaxy isn't here to tell me, and she didn't label them or anything. So uh, we've also got this crazy thing. This is intense. This is too big to fit in my lens here. We've got a Sota Toys from uh, 2005, mint on card. 
Uh, Birdie, I'm not a big Street Fighter fan, so I don't know who Birdie is. Uh, I am a big Translucent fan, <laughs> Translucent figure fan, so this is awesome. Uh, all these accessories, alternate head, alternate hands, uh, and perfect. Look at this, there's actual chain in here. And look at it, I don't know if you can see how... Uh, how rusted it is still in the package. That's crazy. Uh, I don't think I really have any other, uh, I don't have any of these other figures here. I certainly don't have the regular version of Birdie, uh, but I do have a translucent Blanca from this line, so that's really cool. Uh, and then lastly, uh, Nathan uh, was nice enough to include some some bits for uh, Wednesday and Lupin. Uh, a couple of them have already been claimed here, so uh, I'm happy to report that they enjoyed them. So thanks, Nathan. Next up is uh, John and Patty from Bay City, Michigan. I'm not gonna put the whole box in the frame here because the box is too big, and I don't wanna wreck up my whole uh, photo booth setup here. Uh, but uh, I will show off a couple of the bits here that were included. They, uh, John and Patty are frequent contributors to Dan in the Photo Booth. And, you know, before I go any further, uh, just one, one quick note about the production of these videos. This is our, this is what we would consider, th there's a full spectrum of videos uh, for, for the pro programming enjoyment here on Toy Galaxy. And the normal episodes, our Thursday episodes, our, our history ofs, our oddities, those sorts of things, the lists. We consider those the high end. That's the that's the big budget. Those are the marquee feature things. Uh, this is the low end <laughs> version of the production. Uh, you can't have a spectrum without uh, you know the the bottom and the top. And uh, so this really establishes sort of the low tech, uh, uh, make it up as I go sort of end of the uh, toy galaxy thing. And I am frequently producing these things. Oh man, late at night, and uh, they're not scripted. And I'm really tired. And uh, yeah, so that's where these videos come from. So this is a Caliban arm uh, from the Build-A-Figure Caliban, which I think I already have this arm. I can't remember. I'm missing one piece. I think I'm missing a leg. I don't know who that leg came from, but uh, I definitely need one more piece. Maybe I, maybe it is the arm. I hope it's the arm, because then he's done. It's just one more piece. Uh, loyal Subjects Tigra, uh, which I'll be honest, I can't remember if I still already have that one or not. Uh, I don't have Mumra. Uh, I've definitely got Lionel. I've definitely got Panthro. I think I have Chitara. Uh, you know, I think I have Tigra and I don't have Chitara. I don't even know if they made Chitara, to be honest with you. Uh, this is a unique piece. This you certainly don't see every day. Uh, this is a Black Major, factory produced. Um, I don't know what this guy's name is. I think John mentioned it in his note, but I didn't pay attention. Uh, Black Major is a name that's uh, pretty well known throughout the three and three quarter inch G.I. Joe collecting community. Uh, just look up uh, Black Major on Instagram, uh, just like it sounds, and you'll find uh, the his uh, feed of action figures and stuff. Uh, as I understand it, these were actually produced out of factory, so they're, they are definitely, you know, knockoffs. These are obviously Hasbro uh, molds um, and pretty well done stuff and this is obviously done up to you know in the color scheme of a, a cobra trooper but i don't really know uh, i don't know anything else about the rest of the story i've never researched it we got uh, a timber here with a black mohawk down his back and then all the appropriate weapons from snake eyes version 2 but that's a really cool piece uh, i haven't really had a chance to look at i've seen other black major figures in person and there's tons of them hundreds and hundreds of pieces i, I don't know if it got into the thousands but uh, lots of pieces and i don't know the story behind the funding or, or, or how any of it worked um, but I know of them. Uh, so it's pretty neat to see one of these in person, especially this particular uh, design scheme. There's also a batch of Star Wars cards here. Uh, John mentioned that he put the best card on top, which of course uh, is Boba Fett attacks. Uh, or, or rather, this is Boba Fett getting attacked. He's or he's attacking, he's being defended. He's getting, uh, I'm, he's losing. It's sad. Return of the Jedi. We're not gonna go through all these. It's just, it would take too long. There's just a couple more here. Almost there, almost done. Just a few more cards. I think there's some duplicates. Ooh, Han Solo. Lando. All kinds of cards here. Anyway, anyway, we'll fast forward. We'll fast forward. There's there's a lot of cards here. A lot of duplicates. We got some more. Uh, we got some red bordered cards. There's some other stuff in here. Uh, ooh, Superman. Ah, nice. No, oh, that's cool. Pleasant surprise there. I know there were Superman cards in here. Chemical plants cards are falling on the floor now. 
Oh, man, I am super psyched about these. Look, I'll be honest with you, the Star Wars cards, I've got tons of those. I've got a full set of Star Wars Return and Empire. Uh, but these Superman cards, you do not see these very often. This is great. What is going on in this picture? I don't even remember that part. That's interesting. All right, good stuff. Good stuff. This is Superman 3 with Richard Pryor. And uh, Evil Superman. Oh, I wish there was a good shot of Evil Superman in here. I might have missed. There he is. Yeah. Disgraceful. A disgraceful Superman. Oh, I wish there was a shot of him flicking the peanuts at the back mirror. That is a great classic scene. Awesome stuff. Hey, that is a very pleasant surprise. Richard Pryor right there. Uh, ah, man. And that creepy end scene with the the robotic and the cyborg looking thing that creeped me out as a kid for sure that's some really great stuff anyway i gotta get to the best piece here i'm, I'm killing too much time on this video the best piece in the video there was a couple of cap guns in the box too but i'm not going to show those off here actually there's two more really cool pieces left one is this instruction sheet uh, a few video back uh, videos back john and uh, uh patty had sent in a big star wars diorama of jabba's uh throne room uh, and so he followed it up with, uh, this is the actual instruction sheet for it, uh, including the uh, paint scheme so that you know how to unfrozen Han Solo, uh, so that you know how to paint all of these guys properly. Um, oh, here's, uh, here's frozen Han Solo on the left there. Uh, we got the Wal Wal Kabashite and Bubo and Max Rubo Hoover uh, is I don't I don't know that was named Hoover Yuzum Boba Fett the man right there Ula Gargan the mole uh, I don't know if some of these names are all correct but oh got some assembly instructions as well so that's really cool that's neat just by itself even without the actual uh, diorama set that's awesome uh, but this is a really cool piece this is something that you just don't see every day this is the actual Ravel. Robotech changers, the robots that change, uh, includes one complete kit, which may be changed to many versions. And then it's kind of loose in the box here, so you're going to hear it all rattle. Uh, at the bottom there, it says Vexa. <laughs> uh, this is actually, it's from 1984, uh, and this is pre-Harmony Gold Partnership. So you can see that, like, the, the styling isn't quite exactly the way it would appear in the cartoon, uh, because Ravel didn't have the rights to the cartoon. You'd know all this if you watched our uh, series on the history of Robotech. Uh, Harmony Gold had the rights to the show. Ravel had the rights to the actual model kits. Uh, and it was just like the, man, it was just a wild west of things. Look at this Axoid. What is it? What's going on there? That's a weird looking thing. Uh, it's another, it's another uh, Valkyrie, uh, Veritech. But it's like red and stuff. Uh, so uh, John said he's not sure how much of the model kit is here. <laughs> Uh, but even, again, even if it was just the box, I think that's really fantastic. Just just the historical significance of this thing. Ah, look, it even has a fan, uh, a Phoenix missile, like it's an F-14 or something. That's ridiculous. Um, so we've got the body and the arms. Got the head. Got a leg with a tire sticking out of it. Other bits and stuff there. I'll have to see if I can assemble this at some point. Oh, here's the other leg back here. Here's the other leg back here. So, I don't know. It looks like it might... Uh, most of it's here. I don't know if it's all here. Uh, but like I said, even just having the box is a really cool thing. So that's that's a really, really neat piece. A really historic piece. Uh, and of course, this would turn into Robotech and all that stuff. So anyway, but uh, thank you very much to John and Patty for sending all this really great, interesting th stuff. So yeah, like these these booth videos, uh, if, if you are a regular viewer of them, uh, they are shot very late at night. And I am usually just... I got, I'm doing all kinds of things during the daytime, like stuff, awake things, walking around and like talking to people. And so usually I end up shooting these videos way late at night, way, way later than is more, uh, than is, is probably suggested. So I'm a bit punchy, uh, when it happens, when we get here. Um, but yeah, so, you know, there's toys and stuff in here. And uh, this box is from, uh, oh, you know what, by the way, I wanted to offer, I throw a free plug in here for figurerealm.com. So this spells is just like you say, it's the word figure, it's the word realm, F-I-G-U-R-E-R-E-A-L-M.com. Uh, it's a very helpful website for quickly looking up action figure lines and stuff, pictures and things. Uh, it's on the internet. If, uh, if you have some internet, check that out. Uh, this box is from Greg Needham. He is at that Greg Needham on Instagram. So just that Greg Needham. It's his name, Greg Needham, with the word that in front of it, and then that at symbol. Uh, this is his book called uh, Mixed Signals. It's uh, sort of a autobiographical kind of thing. Uh, this here describes it as uh, Scott Pilgr part Scott Pilgrim, part American Splendor, coming together 
to form a new kind of anthology. Uh, this book was kickstarted back in 2016, so congratulations on that. I'm always uh, super happy for uh, any kind of creator that can get a, a project kickstarted and successfully successfully deliver that thing uh, that they're working on, because it's usually a passion project uh, and something very important to uh, and, and close to you know your that thing that motivates you, that makes you want to create things. Uh, so I appreciate Greg sending in a copy of this. I have not read it yet, so I can't give you my own personal review. Uh, but Greg did include a note saying that he loves the show because it lets uh, it's <laughs> he only lets himself watch it when he's on the treadmill, so it forces him to work out. Uh, proof that Toy Galaxy is good for your physical fitness when properly used in conjunction with a uh, healthy diet and lifestyle. So thank you for that. Put that on the box uh, for when we make the DVDs. Uh, but yeah, uh, awesome that the, that Greg got his book kickstarted there. Uh, also in this box we have a Marvel Legends Walgreens exclusive infamous Iron Man. I've never, I think this was a Walgreens exclusive. It was an exclusive somewhere. Wherever it was an exclusive to, I never saw it. Uh, on shelves anywhere so that uh, and in fact that's how most of these ex exclusives have been for me I've very rarely found any of them in the wild uh, normally people are kind enough to, to hear or to see me on social media somewhere saying like can't find that thing and so somebody's nice enough to hook me up because for whatever reason the distribution system ends up putting them all in like one town in, in you know California or something and they never get to New Hampshire uh, this was another Walgreens exclusive the spirit of Obi-Wan and you know the the spirit of Yoda is a Walmart exclusive right now. That uh, look at this nice little effect around here on the, the little the little dots. All that's really a neat effect to to make him glowy. Um, but uh, I wasn't planning. Ooh, it's like foily too. That's really nice. This is uh, this is lush packaging this time around here. Uh, I wasn't planning on picking up Ghost Yoda because they didn't have Ghost Obi Wan. Uh, but that changes now, so now that I have Obi-Wan, I'm probably gonna have to pick up Ghost Yoda, too. I can't not have the set. Uh, and then also in here, we've got these two, I don't know what these things are, Sim Smisky? Smisky glow-in-the-dark, uh, toilet. Uh, these little, weird little guys that, uh, this guy's, like, hanging out. Let me see if I can show you here. He just kinda hangs out here. Uh, I don't know what that... Oh, he's not really well balanced. Maybe if it was on a better shelf, a little more sturdier shelf or something. Um, but uh, there's that guy. And then there's this guy who sits. So you have, like, leany guy and city guy. I don't really know what to do with those. Uh, I think they're just, like, little shelf hanger guys. And I think they glow in the dark, so those are a thing. And then, uh, lastly, in this box we have... Uh, another gift from Mrs. Toy Galaxy. Folks are really looking out for Mrs. Toy Galaxy now. Uh, she loves these little calico critter things. Uh, these and... I don't know, we're gonna have to do a history of... Uh, Producer Greg, if we don't have it on the list already, if you want to throw a history of Sylvanian family on there. I think Sylvanian family was the original Japanese version. Kind of like Macross and Robotech. I think that's how Sylvanian family and uh, calico critters work. Um, I think it's just the... Uh, I, I don't know if one begat the other. Or if it's uh, two competing lines, I can't. Oh my god, I, I can't imagine that there's an actual competing line here. If like the the Sylvanian family calico crittos wars or something like that, but it, maybe it's there. Maybe there's a story. We'll have to look into it. Uh, so so if we don't have that on the list, producer Greg, if you could throw that on the list, that'd be great. Anyway, uh, thanks to Greg. That's uh, that that Greg Needham, not uh, producer Greg. But thank you to producer Greg as well. Thank you, uh, thank you, thank you to all Gregs that are alive and well and uh, happy and healthy and looking out for each other out there. Uh, Thank you. Next up is Rob from Claridge, Pennsylvania. He is at Brickentire on Instagram. That's B-R-I-C-K-I-N-T-Y-R-E uh, on IG. Uh, this is the IC regular from Tron 2.0. Uh, Tron 2.0 was a video game released back in 2003. Just like this series of action figures from NECA Toys. Uh, <laughs> weird thing about this is uh, Rob won this uh, during the Name That Tune contest this uh, earlier this year, much earlier this year, at uh, RetroCon. And we I, we were also at RetroCon, myself, producer Greg, Mrs. Toy Galaxy. And NECA uh, had a booth set up there like they frequently do. And they were selling off stuff from the warehouse. And that's always neat. And it's always super cheap, but inexpensive. Um, and so you end up with, with old stuff. But I never in a million years would have thought they would have had something this old. 2003. 
2003. It, it's insane to me that they still had these and they're still carded. Uh, I bought and uh, I had showed them off in my RetroCon haul video here. So Rob saw this and was like, I got to send this to Dan. This is crazy. Uh, I bought Jet Bradley and Thorn. Still looking for another Mercury. I had all of these figures back in the day when they were originally released. Sold them at some point. Um, so once I saw them at RetroCon, I was like, they're like two bucks a piece or five bucks a piece or something like that. I had to grab them. Uh, so this is really neat. I, I, they didn't have this one, uh, when I was at the booth. So I definitely would have grabbed that. So it's really nice that, uh, Rob sent that in. So Rob, thank you. I don't know what song you won with. I remember hearing that contest going on, but I don't recall who the actual winner was or if there were multiple winners, but either way, congratulations, man. You earned it. And last up is Brian from Lincoln, Nebraska. There is all kinds of stuff in this box. Uh, Brian did a pretty good job of hitting all the notes here. I mean, right off the bag, right off the box, we have uh, a Boba Fett uh, mug. I think these are the kind where it's like, don't, just don't drink out of this. Hand wash only for dishwash, uh, hand wash only, not for dishwasher, microwave or oven use. Uh, and so when you read that, you're like, I don't know if I should put that in my mouth. Or I don't know if I should put things that were in there in my mouth. Uh, you know, things like this. This was uh, sitting in here, so I definitely wouldn't put that in my mouth. Um, but this is the... Uh, uh, Galaxy, Galaxy Heroes? What was the name of this line? Um, Galactic Heroes. Galactic Heroes? That sound right? Uh, I love this line. Uh, we collected just about every single figure in this line. Uh, obviously, I would have to get all the bounty hunters for sure. I don't have the whole collection. I, mean, I have all the bounty hunters, uh, and I'm not. I'm not building a set of these, nor of these mugs. Uh, in fact, and in fact, all Boba. Th you know, I don't really collect all Boba Fett stuff. That's a that's a, a mischaracterization, a confusion thing that we need to clear up right now. Uh, I don't collect all Boba, Th Boba Fett stuff, so uh, mom, if you're listening, I appreciate when you send me things like this or like this, uh, but I don't actually collect these things. Uh, this is cool. I don't mind this. These are good. I like having this kind of stuff. Uh, every once in a while you get to trade people, uh, trade with people for stuff like these. Uh, I know I had an extra set of all the bounty hunters, and I, I sent those over to Pixel Dan uh, when we did a box swap at one point. Uh, also in here we got uh, Mighty Mugs. <laughs> Snake Eyes with his Uzi and Ninja Sword. That's cool. I liked the Mighty Mugs line. Usually I'm not a big fan of lines where it's just like the same body with a different sort of style painted on it. I, I, you know, I would love this line more if these were actually sculpted elements. The, that, that would appeal to me a lot more. Um, kind of like Funko Pops, uh, but I still like eyes that have some life to them, unlike Funko Pops. Uh, but we got a Mighty Mugs cap here. Uh, we've got in this bag... got uh, another tiny little cap and a tiny little red skull and we've got a sound wave uh, I can't remember what Cy Cybertron Heroes of Cybertron what was this line called Robot Heroes something like that uh, I love this sound wave I don't know if I had the sound wave I definitely don't have like laser beak I have Ravage oh my god Ra Ravage is absolutely adorable in that line he's one of the cutest things on the planet if you don't have a little Ravage from that line get him he's an adorable little robot kitten and he's sitting, and I love him. Uh, in here, we've got DC Universe. Uh, uh, Ab Abin Sir, is that his name? Uh, Sinestro as a Green Lantern. And then uh, Hal Jordan. I think this is Hal Jordan. I've never actually seen this figure before. I didn't even know they did him in his uh, Ferris Air uh, outfit. That's really cool. I dig that. Oh, yeah, it's, it's Green Lantern. He's got his ring on. Bing! It's actually not a ring. It's just a dot. It's just a green painted dot. Uh, it still works though. I dig that. That's a cool figure. I haven't seen that one before. I've seen these two guys. I haven't seen that. Uh, Ow, we got a couple of translucent pieces. Ah, look at this. Translucent Yoda. I think I already had this one. Uh, but that's cool. I'm just going to pretend it's translucent uh, baby Yoda. Whoops. Until uh, Black Series gets one of those out, which should be happening any day now. And then uh, we've got a, I think this is movie Human Torch. So I think this is Chris Evans Human Torch. Uh, I have the six inch versions of these. I don't have this uh, weird sort of middle version. It's five inch tall, almost Marvel Legends style. Ah, we got a bunch of, well, first off, we got a Boba Fett luggage tag here. Cool. And then a couple of Supermans. I don't have this one. This one looks like it's uh, pre DCUC. Uh, I'm not sure which one that is, though. We got, uh, this is from The Batman or Batman Brave and the Bold. I'm not 100% positive. Uh, I have the Batman from this. Didn't have the Superman, so that's really cool. This is three Superman figures I don't have. That's really awesome. This is the Brandon Routh 
uh, movie Superman, who's actually pretty well articulated. I know this one, uh, when we did our top 10 Superman figures, this one was actually ranked pretty high among collectors at the time. Uh, he's got a pretty good articulated head. Just really missing a, a decent torso joint here. Um, but not a bad figure. That's cool. I dig that. I dig all three of those. And then lastly, at the bottom of the box here, very cool. Didn't have this one. I, I saw it a few times, hadn't bothered to pick it up yet. Uh, it was one of those pieces that I figured, you know, around the holidays or at some point I'd see it at a show and I'd grab it. Uh, but I'm actually pretty psyched to have this. That's cool. And to get both of these Obi-Wan figures in one day, uh, that's really neat. The, the young Obi-Wan and the dead Obi-Wan. Very cool stuff. Uh, so thank you very much, Brian. Thank you again to Nathan, John, and Patty, Greg, uh, producer Greg, Rob, Brian. Thank you for watching this and all of our videos. Hit like, hit subscribe, check out our Patreon if you're in the position to help the channel grow. Thank you. Later.